Now began. Guests, please note that in order to be a member of our club, you must be a current or former active member of Toastmasters International and have completed at least the communicator component manual or levels one and two of a path in the pathways program or you must have a substantive relevant presentation experience that you demonstrate in a three to five minute speech delivered during one of our club meetings all requests for membership are subject to club approval if you have not already done so please change your panel to ensure it shows your name and role if you have one right click and select rename to do so we have members and often guests from many countries throughout the world others as a professional organization, we ask that you please be aware of language or word usage that may be considered offensive or otherwise insensitive due to cultural differences. Please note that we will be recording the meeting. Your video audio contribution may be used for club marketing purposes. Also, please mute your microphone when you are not speaking. Today's theme is the Olympic a spirit. Please welcome our club president, distinguished Toastmaster, Nick Lacani. Thank you very much, producer Antonia. Welcome. Today, I don't know what brought it on. I seem to have actually added a little bit of headwear, but I'm sure we'll find out more about that in a few minutes. <laughs> It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to Digital Communicators today on the 9th of August. And we have one or two club announcements, would you believe? One of the things that I need to inform you about is that uh, just in the last hour, we have had a, an executive board meeting where I can report that it was decided by the board to actually carry out some of the, uh, some of the uh, club business and inform, uh, make decisions and then inform the club at the start of the meeting like this for those issues that are small, but you need to be informed and they may well be a vote on that. Now, today, uh, we, we actually should carry that out. Is that right, Mr. Secretary Deck? Give me a thumbs up. We need to carry out a vote today. Now, the vote today is about having certain bits of business to be done in the first five minutes or 10 minutes of a meeting and then do have the rest of the meeting run as, as per plan. What I would like you to do is to vote yes or no. I would like you to actually, if, if you are a member, please, send a personal, a, a direct note to Dec Klusky, our timer, who is also our secretary. He will register your vote, yes or no. So do you agree? Yes. Do you disagree? No. So all members for this, no guests, please. Okay. We're gonna improvise on that. So please use the chat function to send a note, a private note directly to timer Dec. Now, a couple of other things. At the end, I'm going to actually read out some uh, educational attainments uh, before the end of the meeting. However, it's 1832 London time. It's time to introduce our Toastmaster of the day. She is the amazing, the delightful, the irresistible force that is Toastmaster of the day, DTM, distinguished Toastmaster, Kavita, Dulai. Thank you, Nick. Thank you so much. Welcome to our Digital Communicators meeting, 9th of August, one day after the Olympics closed. So today, the theme is the Olympic spirit. What best to celebrate but that spirit that has been going on for the last 17 days. So I have asked our speakers and our various functionaries what they enjoyed best about the Olympics and what the Olympics mean to, means to them. And throughout this evening, I'll be sharing that with you. In 2012, 
I had the chance to visit the Olympics in London and I took my three kids with me and I asked them just before this meeting, what did the Olympics mean to you? My eldest said the athletics, she loved the athletics. And my second one said, I loved the Paralympics. And my third one said, the ice cream. <laughs> but hey ho, you can't please everybody. So my role is Toastmaster of the evening. So what I'll be doing is guiding you through the evening. We have three prepared speeches, table topics, and we also have evaluations. We have something very unique about this club. We have open feedback. So you guys can all give additional feedback. And we also have something called the producer role, which we'll introduce to you in a bit. So let me introduce you to the first functionary. Our first functionary is the timer. And what our timer likes is the skateboarding. But he's also the founder member of the Bachelors. Did you know that in 1964 and 1965, the Bachelors sold more records than the Beatles? Can you imagine that? To the Olympics, what does it mean to him? It is a breath of fresh air for him. What he likes is the friendliness of the competition. It's a bit like Toastmasters, isn't it? And he likes some of the people that are so young that take part. He said one of, the, one of the girls was only 13 years old. But let me introduce you to Deck Kluski. Please welcome Deck Kluski. Yes, Deck Kluski. Now I've got one minute to tell you uh, exactly what the timer does. Um, I'm just trying to put reset. It takes takes that long to reset the clock, really. But <laughs> timing is very important. You'll never be asked to speak in public. Never be booked to speak. You'll always be booked to speak for a certain amount of time. 30 seconds? Three minutes? Ten minutes? Gettysburg Address was only 12 minutes. So it's very important to know your timing. I will be uh, using three times. I'll be using the green one, which is the minimum time that you can speak for, minimum time. Then the amber, which is the medium time. And then you should be starting to think of wrapping up. And then the red time, when you really should be wrapped up. You have another 30 seconds. After that 30 seconds, you will get a bell. Looks huge there, it's not. It's a tiny little bell like that. And then, 15 seconds after that, you'll get another bell. And then 15 seconds after that, you will get the monstrous bell and you will stop speaking. That is what the timer does. Back to you, Madam Toastmasters. Thank you. Thank you, Deck. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, we say thank you. Right, our second functionary, second helper of the evening, I cannot do this role by myself, is the grammarian. Now she's been a Toastmaster for eight years. She is passionate about better communication skills. And in her spare time, she does the Ironman. Spare time, I can imagine there's no spare time left after that. In the Olympics, what she enjoyed was the triathlon and the swimming. What she really likes about the Olympic spirit is the dedication, the discipline and the person for them to be the best in the world. And she's motivated by the races. Please welcome our grammarian, Pamela. Good evening, digital communicators. Our word of the day is authentic. And in my background, you see Carissa Moore as she wins the women's surfing gold. Carissa showed authentic joy when she won the gold. Please use the word of the day. I will be counting the times you used authentic and I will be keeping track of proper and improper use of the English language. If you use it in unique, funny ways, I will make a note of it also and give you kudos at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. That was a very authentic introduction. Thought I might as well get that in. Thank you. Right. 
Our next functionary or helper for the evening is our Vice President of Education of this club, Digital Communicators. She has been following the women's boxing, especially Kat Kelly Harrington. I believe she got a gold, is, am I right? She got a gold, yeah, for boxing? Well done, thank you. <laughs> yeah, she got a gold and she's from Dublin. What she's really enjoyed about the Olympics is the non-stop TV watching and ad admiring the competitors and watching their years of hard work. So please help me welcome Colette Ainscope. Thank you, Kavita, Toastmaster of the day. Mr. President, fellow Toastmasters and guests tonight, I am pointing my way to be live reporter for this club. I, this is my first time to take on this role and I want to win gold medal. There are three parts to this role. Number one, I will be tweeting live about this show as it goes on. Number two, I will be delivering a killer punch of a live report at the end of the meeting. And number three, writing a blog, giving all the news. Don't mind me if I take my screen off. I'm still here working away behind the scenes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Colette. Yes, you can take the gloves off if you need to write or type. That's fine. <laughs> Don't have to, you don't have to be in the spirit all the time, but most of the time, please. Thank you. Right, our fourth functionary, and this is the functionary that's very unique to the uh, another one that's unique to this um, club, is our open feedback facilitator. She's a young lady who just joined us in July from Russia's, been a Toastmaster to, since 2018. And her swimming, her favorite Olympic sport is swimming. And I'm glad a lot of you have turned out with your goggles. <laughs> so that's brilliant. Her favorite, her, her favorite past Olympics has been watching it with her family. So please welcome Audrey. Please welcome Audrey. Thank you, Toastmaster Kavita. Ready, get set, go. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Today, I'll be facilitating the Olympic open feedback session in the second half of a meeting. For our three athletes, DTM Durian, DTM Christian, and last but not least, Toastmaster Vincent. Keeping in mind the Olympic motto, faster, higher, stronger, and together, I would like to ask you to pay close attention to the athlete's performance because your feedback would help them to improve. Don't forget, feedback is the breakfast of champions. Over to you, Toastmaster Kavita. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you for sharing your Olympic spirit. I agree, feedback is uh, the, the breakfast for champions. Thank you. So now, let's now move into the, the prepared speeches section of, of, of tonight. So our first speaker, the title of his speech is Cooking with Colour, and he wants to bring authenticity to your plates. And what he says, what he requests from all of you is please make sure he's in speaker view so you get the best out of his presentation. This speech is from Effective Coaching. Please welcome Julian Sarasada. Julian Sarasada. Cooks and chefs around the world know that food tastes better when the plate pleases the eye. Yet, we as a presenters, sometimes we forget this essential cooking principle. First, impressions matter. Our patrons will judge us on how we look, how the menu is presented, and how the food is brought to the table. And like fish and chips, in many British pubs, we presenters tend to use and overuse 
PowerPoint because it draws the attention of the audience. It also helps to understand what is being cooked during the presentation and helps to remember the tasty bits of that message. Well, if you know how to use it, because the fact that a British pub has fish and chips on its menu, or you use PowerPoint, doesn't mean that the fish and chips is good or your presentation is good. For that reason, today, I want to speak about an ingredient sometimes forgotten, color palette. We will see a bit of theory. We will see how we can mix all these colors and we will see how can we marinate or dish to bring the best flavor for your audience. So as you know, there are three basic colors. This is the red, this is the yellow, this is the blue, and they cannot be formed by mixing other colors. However, you can mix them and get secondary colors. As you can see, on my right, we have a color wheel. This color wheel, we will use it later as a cheat sheet where we can combine our palette. The first, the primary colors and the secondary colors, if we mix them together, we get tertiary colors. And if we add a bit of black or a bit of white, we can get a wider range of colors. Not bad, isn't it? But how do we mix these colors? Because as you know, we cannot mix all the ingredients in the kitchen. Otherwise, we can get, this is like, a spaghetti, avocado spaghetti with tomato sauce. Ooh. Or what about this one? Hens beans cake. Ooh. Or cheesy marmite sandwich. This is that no way will cause a good impression on your patterns. How, how can we get a good presentation palette to bring those flowers in our presentation? Is it? First of all, we can use the more traditional approach, adjacent colors. In that color wheel, if we get the colors that are close together, we will get a safe color palette. It may not be the most exciting one, but it's safe. And sometimes you need to play safe. But if you feel more adventurous, why not to use equally separate colors? In this color wheel, you can use different colors. In the top half, you can see we choose colors that are separated by three colors. In the bottom half, you see that we have chosen palettes that are separated only by two colors. Any of these will look good on your menu, no doubt about it. But if you feel that you want to do something unique, get inspired by nature. Yes, take a picture of a landscape and try to figure out what colors you can bring to your own palette. There are out there a lot of websites that can identify the color on your pictures. And that brings me to my next point. How we marinate this color to bring the best flavors on our presentation. First of all, you have to limit the color you use on your presentation. Otherwise, you will create a color cacophony that will be very difficult to decipher for your audience. Also, if you want to print that flower subtly, you can use hierarchy. Make sure that you use different colors for different ways. The background in one color, the font in another color, if you want to bring attention over a specific item, why don't you use complementary colors? Those are the ones who are opposite in the color wheel, and they will add a lot of contrast, and the eye will look into that. I know, I know, I know, a lot of things to learn in this fast cooking lesson. However, if you want to really want to know more about this, I recommend you to come to PowerPoint for non-designers. 
This is a workshop, Digital Communicators is running at the end of the month. And you have here, there, you have there, the QR code. I will leave it there so you can scan it at any moment and get more information. But if there is something you have to take today, huh, is that by using color, mixing the colors properly and marinating your sauce, you will be cooking finally with gas. You will be cooking with color. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julian. I look forward to the workshop and I look forward to cooking with color. Thank you so much. So our second speaker, he says, change is inevitable, but growth is optional. He says things around us evolve all the time, but are we evolving with the change? His favorite sport from the Olympics was a decathlon. What he really liked about the Olympic spirit was being able to raise that bar higher and to be able to shine on the global stage. His presentation, his speech is from Presentation Mastery, level two. Please, well, his, oh, sorry, title. Title is, Can I Grow? Please welcome Kishan Ramchandran. Thank you. When was the last time you read a book? Seriously, do you even remember the last time you went, picked up a book, even decided to invest in one or you stole one? When was the last time you, you did that just to read a book? Type yes in the chat or type the date in the chat. When was it? A month ago, a week ago, a year ago, a decade ago? Let's see how the answers pop up. Come on. This is, by the way, very interactive. I'm going to ask you to use the chat as much as possible. Oh, one person, Mr. President, has the exact date, 7th of August. Wow. All right. So here's the next one. Are we talking here when you're reading about amazing books like Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, or Shades of Grey? If yes, that's not where I'm going. Where I'm going right now is with personal development books. These kind of books. You can see them on screen. There's so many of them. So here's my question again. And this time it's specific. When was the last time you took a book that helped you improve in one way or another? Ah, some of us are thinking. So here's a further question. Have you ever read from start to finish a personal development book, a non-fiction book, a book that helps you improve in one way or another. Okay, two weeks ago. No, no, <laughs> Mr. President, oh my Lord. Two weeks ago, a few of us are saying yes, yes, yes. So, okay, we have a mix here and some of us are quiet. Well, Madam Toastmasters, ladies and gentlemen, here's a news for you. Change is inevitable, but growth is optional. What does that mean? That means at any given point of our life, every single day, every single moment, something is changing, something is evolving, something is happening to either make us better or to drag us down. Here's my question to you. When something happens, something unexpected happens to you, would you prefer to be prepared for it? Or just when that bridge comes, you, you'll see what happens and deal with the unknown. Prepared for it or deal with the unknown? Let's see in the chat. How would you like to be? Prepared for it or deal with the unknown? If something comes your way, a change comes your way. Prepared for future event, Mrs. Benjamin. Prepare, cross that bridge when it comes. Yeah, I've been like that. Okay, great. So where am I going with all these questions? Before I share this with you, let me share a few fun facts with you. Did you enjoy the last speaker where he, he was sharing his knowledge about colors and the palette? If yes, type, and, and you're looking forward to attending his workshop, Tap yes in the chat. Okay, great. 
Now, by the way, this is not the sales pitch for Julian Sereceda. No. This is me leading to this point here. It's all about creativity. How we're using our mind, our intellect, all the intelligence we're accumulating to deliver a piece of Canva. That's it. That's what we want to deliver, a piece of Canva. In the case of speaker number one, that's what he did. And now everyone's going to sign up because he is just knowledgeable. It, it didn't happen like that. He obviously put hours and hours to prepare, test, practice, and rehearse for it. All right? So if you think that Julian was born like that, just he came out of the womb all ready to present on color palettes, type yes in the chat. Or if you think that it was hard work, persistent, and it also included a good amount of reading, type reading in the chat. If you think Julian read, if you think anyone who has been creative read something at some point in their life, type yes in the chat. Okay. Right. So I've got you hooked right now. Now, what's the point of this? Creativity and intelligence and our mindset is just like this leaf. If we do not, don't feed it, this is what happens to it. It shrinks. It depreciates. It loses value. And as we move forward, here are a few statistics for you. So these are fun facts. In 2019, 33% of high school graduates were found to have never have read a single book. And in 2020, where we were COVID-ridden, 35% of the world were reading. 35% of the world were reading. Now, if that were you and you were enjoying your Zoom life, great. So happy for you. But here's the downside for it. If you were not reading, this is possibly you. I know that was me at some point when I was not in digital communicators or another two small session. So what, what is happening here? If you look at this sheet right now, I don't see UK. I don't see United Kingdom or England at all. And this was a survey that came in 2020, November 2020, on the website globalenglishediting.com. And if you look how it's spread, it's India leading with Hong Kong in the 11th place. So these, and, and here, even then, it's less than 12 hours of reading a week. We're talking about a week. So reading, even though it took, it picked up pace during COVID, it didn't go fast. So you all agree that change is required and reading is required to grow. Now, here's the challenge that we have. How easy is it for any one of us to just go and pick up a book. It's easy, right? Very easy. But here's the problem. How easy is it to read the book and go through the book? If you think that's easy, type yes in the chat. And I'm just going into red right now. I'm going to reply for you. It's not easy. And here's my proposal. My proposal is at Digital Communicators, consider setting up your own book club i'm sorry our own book club now what happens when we have a book club success happens we read growth happens so here's my question what are you reading next madam to master thank you kishan thank you so much a lot of um, food for thought there thank you moving on to our third speaker our third speaker likes running and tennis and fascinated by gymnastics. He wishes the Olympic sports were more about were, were more about national uh, more about the sport than national pride. His speech is from innovative planning and the title of it is Make a Change Now. So please welcome Vincent Nere. Good evening. I would like to take you on to a walk two or three times a week 
I have the pleasure to walk on the beach promenade of Marbella. Isn't it lovely? The sun is shining, the water is calm. But this, as we have heard from Kabita, our Toastmaster of the evening, this is likely to disappear because water levels are rising and this might well be gone in a very brief time, which is not really what we want. Consequently, I have come up with an idea. While I walk and exercise and burn calories, I also charge my electric car, thanks to the Marbella Town Hall, free of charge. So while I, what, we, what some people might call work out, burn calories, my car injects calories. And in these, inside these two hours of charging my electric car, you will see what happens. I can drive about 100 kilometers because I can charge about eight kilowatts per hour. Now, isn't that wonderful? So I drive to the beach, I walk on the beach, have great fun, enjoy something. And while I am doing this, I'm actually protecting our planet because I'm not using any fossil fuels. Now we said, this is all very complicated and it is not. And I will be talking about just two aspects of electric cars. One is your money. And number two is air pollution. There are a lot more aspects to that, but let's concentrate inside these two seven minutes, which we have on these two points. First of all, if you, you, if you don't have solar panels as I have, so we can fuel our car and we, don't, we have a lovely town hall, which fuels our car as well. On the average price of about nine pence per kilowatt at nighttime off peak, the same as about in Spain, we pay about 10 cents. You can charge your car overnight and that costs you about four pounds and you can drive for about 180 miles. Now this compares to petrol. Now, this is a lot more expensive. Now this works it down to a hundred miles and hundred miles will cost you with an electric charger, just two and a half pounds, whereas 14 pounds in sterling, if you use fossil fuels, you can imagine what kind of damage you do. But it, even it's getting cheaper because here in Spain, when we go to supermarkets, we find that they provide us with free electricity. Yes, they do that because they love to see me. And also when you go to shopping malls, well, they allow you to just plug in your car, shop, and be happy. So economically speaking, this is very, very, very attractive because you have basically no maintenance costs because the electricity can often, if you can provide it yourself through um, your solar panels, it's completely free. There will be many places in the world where you can um, charge your batteries even when you stay overnight in a hotel, they're happy to see you. And while you sleep tight in a hotel, your car is being charged. But there are more things to that. Can you imagine living in the UK, perhaps in Manchester, wherever you are in the world, and air pollution is terrible. It kills and kills and kills. It kills something like 7 million people a year globally. So if we kill 7 billion people globally, that is an enormous amount of people. We, we have to take the responsibility for it. Yes, I agree, air pollution is not exclusively cars. It's also trucks, it's factories and all other kinds of things. But a large proportion of that is indeed our driving habits. So why, why should we continue using fossil driven cars? And it's fine, we know it's going to end. And curiously enough, when cars became popular in the early part of last century, 1910, there were more electric cars available in New York City than there were fossil powered cars. But there was this lobby of people producing petroleum and they wanted to sell that and therefore they 
made us buy cars running on fossil fuels. It still is the same way. The Saudis predominantly and other oil producers are making sure that we are very good consumers of their goods. In consequence, we have seen that some people, people die and die and die. And while I delivered this speech to you in these seven minutes, some 80 people have died globally. Do you really want to take responsibility for this? Do you really think that it is really right that we kill people or that our way of approaching the world, how the, our, our way of, of just taking our car and taking it to the gas station, filling it up and just driving about is the right thing. And if you combine that with not just the or our environmental view, but also the economic view, because it, it is so much more inexpensive. And only 1% of people who have ever bought an electric car will ever go back to fossil cars. So what I would like you to do is go out, have a look at these cars, check it out and get a new one and enjoy it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you for doing a follow on talk on sustainability. And also, yes, I've ordered my electric car. So there you are. Thank you. Thank you. So now we move on to the next section of this meeting. The next section of this meeting is table topics with a speciality and our speciality as digital communicators is instant feedback. So we've got table topics with instant feedback and that's going to be presented by Azra and her favourite sport is volleyball. She says she can sit there for hours and hours watching with fascination how the ball passes around. I, I can relate to that. And what she loves about the Olympics is really that, that family time, being able to sit and watch the Olympics with her family. So please welcome Azra Bibi. Thank you so very much, Madam Toastmaster. As your topics master, I would be asking you question where you will have to speak on your feet for two minutes. Our timer deck will show green at one, amber 130 and red at two. Uh, after the speaker has spoken, I will call upon someone to give immediate feedback as Kavita just shared for one minute. And how do we call this? Members are a famous authentic shotgun evaluation. So allow me to first share my screen. The first question, Pierre de Coubertin rightly said, the main thing is not to win, but to participate. My first question goes to Toastmaster Antonia Harrison. Convince us why the focus should be on participation convince us why the focus should be on participation. Over to you. Thank you, Madam Topics Master. Winning is all around us. We start young at school. Here in Toastmasters, of course, we go for best speaker, we go for best table topic. It's all around us, isn't it? Winning. Winning in sport, winning in, in all sorts of areas of life. But what if you can't win? Not everybody can be the best. For some people, being the best is their best. And isn't that important, to, uh, fellow Toastmasters? Because maybe they've just achieved more than they have ever achieved. And I think that is important. So while it is wonderful to see the athletes aim to be the best in their sport, isn't it also wonderful to see sports people, children, everyday people just aim to participate? Have you ever taken up a new sport just because you thought you couldn't? But what if you could? I've, I've had a foot problem for the last few years. It's been troubling me. 
And I, I didn't do anything really because it was hurting me. But I started walking this year. And within a week, I'm going to achieve the virtual Camino de Santiago. That's 785 kilometers of walking. A year ago, I didn't think I could walk very far. Even walking up the high street was hurting me. So just participating gives me a great sense of achievement. So I think that while some people need to be the best for their own personal reasons, sometimes just participating, being authentic, being yourself is all that we need. And I encourage more people to consider what they can do to achieve their best, which might just be one step at a time. Madam Toastmaster, Madam Tabletop is Master. Thank you so much, Antonia. Being their best is their best. What if you could? Fellow Toastmasters go out and participate. Now may I request Toastmaster Julian to please give a one minute shotgun evaluation, please. Over to you. Hi, Antonia. Well done. Absolutely fantastic speech. You spoke very calmly. You were taking your time and it was clearly spoken. Congratulations. Now, let me give you some ideas that could help you to improve this delivery. Although your speech was calm, posed, it was always at the same level. You were taking your time to think what you were going to say next. And that dragged it over the two minutes and a half. I would like you at some point to add some speed or reduce high volume or low volume to add a bit of texture. Also, did I hear well? And you say thanks, Madame Topics Master, but you forgot about the rest of us. I think that if you are going to say hello, thank you, do it for everybody. Make everybody welcome. I will say also that what a fantastic opportunity you have missed of giving an example of what we saw on the Olympics when the two guys jumping over shared the goal. But anyway, well done, Antonia. Thank you so much, Julian. My next question goes to our president, Nick. Refute the statement below and tell us why winning should be more important. Refute the statement below and tell us why winning should be more important. President Nick. Madam Topics Master, this is very simple. Winning is for winners. What about the others? Oh, don't worry about them. They'll catch up with you. That's the point. What you're doing is you're setting the standard. You are the hare that does beat the tortoise. You are raising the bar for others to follow you. Who was the very first person to run 100 meters in 10 seconds? I don't know. Then the next question we have to ask is, were they male or female? That's the point. One of the things that we need to look at is how we define ourselves, how we define winning, and we all should look at winning in whichever area of life we are, whichever social economic structure we are, whichever gender, whichever persuasion, uh, sexual persuasion we are, whatever your role is in whatever world you have, one of the key things is, if you're a winner and you win today, that sets you up nicely for tomorrow. If you're not a winner, why not? You're only competing against yourself. So, what I would like you to do is to think about the small things in life. When you get up, you make your bed. You were a winner. Cool. I, sorry, I have teenagers. You understand, right? One of the things is set yourself those standards, those small steps 
and you can go and make it all the way up to that mountain. You can make it all the way to those 275 laps of the cycle using the cycle. You can make it to all of those 26.2 miles of the marathon. One step at a time. You will do it, you can do it, and you are a winner because you have a performance pushing you. You have your high performance and your ethos pushing you to the limit every day. Do not stand for shirkers and for the, the blah blah that comes from here. Now, what happens when you're a winner? You hit the bell. Hit it, deck. <laughs> and you're muted. <laughs> Back to you, Madam Topic Master. Thank you so much, President Nick. You will do it. You can do it. Winning is for winners. Thank you so very much for this answer. May I now request Toastmaster Kavita to please give a shotgun evaluation. Over to you, Kavita. Thank you, Azra. What I really loved was that was, was the message um, from Nick's talk. If you break it all down, the message was you're only competing against yourself. And by competing against yourself, you can be a winner. However, there is place for improvement. Um, and I think where I would have liked to see the improvement is to bring some real examples into, into that table topic he did, maybe some personal examples or something he has seen. But in summary, what I really liked was the, the way he delivered it, the pace, the message. So thank you very much. Thank you, Nick. Thank you so much, Kavita. Now may I request one of our guests who gladly accepted to be part of this. Olga, the next question is yours. Describe a favorite athlete of yours. Describe a favorite athlete of yours. Over to you, Olga. Thank you, Madam Topics Master. And everyone in the audience, my favorite athlete, well, there's quite a few. The one that leaps to mind is when I was about six years old, my mother called me down one night and said, have a look at this girl on the TV. She has your name. And it was none other than Olga Corbett, who some of you may have heard of. And I was absolutely enthralled. I, absolutely, I begged my mother, can I do gymnastics? Can I do gymnastics? And then she said to me, no, you have to wait until you're a little bit older. So finally I had her convinced when I was 13 and the very next year, absolutely adored. And the very next year, another athlete popped up and her name was Nadia Kamenech. And I just, I was just overwhelmed. I thought they were amazing. I and mean, she was only 14 and what she did was incredible. And the two of them, I just adored gymnastics. I slept, drank and ate it for about three years until I broke my arm very badly and had to give it up. But I must say the two girls, I remember buying books about them and it was just their sheer dedication. And I know gymnastics has moved considerably since then. I don't even understand what they're doing. But when I look back, you can see videos on YouTube of those two girls, and particularly Olga Corbett. You can see the moves she made and they're absolutely phenomenal, but you could see them and understand them. And that was great. And I think it's kind of lost that magic for me. They're absolutely amazing. I mean, Simone Biles, I'm like, what was that? Incredible. But it's lost a bit of the magic because you can kind of see, you can see the steps they're doing. You can, as a young kid, I was going, Yes, I could try that, I could do that. But if I was watching now, I think that is impossible. So ladies and gentlemen, my favorite two athletes go back to my childhood, Nadia Kamenech and Olga Corbett. Thank you. Thank you, audience members, and thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you so very much for sharing, Olga. May I request Pamela Benjamin to please give a shotgun evaluation, please. Over to you, Pamela. I really liked how you gave your two favorite athletes and what they did. I was enthralled listening to you talk about Nadia Komenich. I absolutely loved her. And I just made me go back and mem remember all these different memories in my mind. So thank you. You took me on a journey. 
that I, I really, it, you just took me on a journey going down and remembering what Olympics meant to me. So it really touched my heart and I really appreciate that. So I didn't hear anything bad. I just loved your joy and enthusiasm talking about these two young girls and what they meant to you. And that touches my heart so much because when I see these girls doing what they do and going out there and whether it's whether it's racing or swimming or something like that. I absolutely love it. It gives me joy and it encourages me. So wonderful, wonderful table topic answer. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. The next question goes to a guest again. To Jackie, please. If you were in the Olympics, which sport would you do? If you were in the Olympics, which sport would you do? Over to you, Jackie. Thank you so much, Madam Table Topics. What sport would I do? I'll be honest, I don't really know. I'm not a great team sport person, so it would probably have to be an individual sport. The sport I would most like to do, although I'm probably not well designed for it, would be one of the swimming contests. I've been swimming since I was about eight and it's always been my dream to do well in swimming. I swam for my school and that was as far as I got because I'm not, well, I'm not, I don't have big hands. I don't have big feet. I'm not especially tall. I have to say I'm quite buoyant, but that's kind of the shape I am, I guess. Um, so I've always been able to float well, but I've not been able to do, actually get the speed right. And I watch the swimming competitions and I am in awe. It's one of the few events I do watch other than martial arts, which I have an absolute passion for, but swimming. And as I watch them powering up and down that pool and then just touching the side of the pool ahead of everybody else, I think maybe if I'd worked harder at practicing my swimming at school, <laughs> that could have been me. Madam Topics Master. Thank you so much for sharing. I would like to say, even for me after volleyball, my next favorite one is swimming. May I now request Toastmaster Christian to please give a shotgun evaluation. Thank you. Uh, Jackie, thank you so much for sharing part of your life. Um, and this is coming from someone who lives on an island and is not a complete swimmer. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed what you shared because it was all about yeah. your personal moment, your own private moment water, that you water. came out and you just shared with, with each and every one of us. Uh, it was flowing, it was conversational, it was engaging. I didn't want you to stop. One thing I would have done differently, that martial arts element, I would have just dropped it because it sort of diluted the essence of your message. Having said that, you also did something inspiring you you made me visualize touching the edge of the pool before everyone else and that moment for me would have also uh, that uh, the visual was missing for me like you know just going back a bit and then sh like just touching the edge and then going for greatness because you were selling me a vision that i think every one of us is looking to to have Thank you. Thank you for doing so. Uh, I'd love to see more of you and congratulations for your, I hope it's not the first time and I hope to see more of your table topics replies. Back to you, Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Christian. That would be all from me. Thank you, Kavita, for this beautiful team. Back to you. Thank you, Ezra. Thank you for those um, Olympic questions, all in line with the Olympic spirit. Brilliant. Thank you so much. So can we have some timings, Deck, please? You can. 
the proper grammar is, may I have the timings? <laughs> I'm a lust for the grammarian. Had a wonderful time. I don't know whether I can do this in one minute, but let's start. The producer at the start, Antonia Hernandez. Two minutes allowed, one minute 52 she took. Nick, Nick Lacani, naughty boy. He was allowed two minutes and he came in at four minutes and 53 seconds. Toastmaster of the day, Kavita, allowed three minutes for her introduction and she came in at two 21, very commendable. Timer, me. I was to do one minute, I did one minute and three seconds. Wow! Slap on the back deck. Grammarian, Pamela Benjamin. One minute allowed, one minute, oh, four, she did. Very good. Live reporter, Colette. She was allowed one minute and came in at 40 seconds. Incredible. Open feedback, uh, Audrey Ying Lee. She was allowed one minute to explain the whole thing and she came in at 59 seconds. First speaker, Julian Suracida. Seven minutes allowed, come in at a commendable six minutes and six seconds. Second speaker, Christian Ramchurn. Seven minutes allowed, seven. 30. Smack on! One second more would have been disqualified. Vincent Neary, seven minutes allowed, come in at five minutes and 31 seconds. Then we had the topics, two minutes allowed for Azra Bibi Mosion. Uh, two minutes allowed and she came in very, very good at two minutes and 10 seconds. Uh, supposed to finish at 7.26, but she finished at 7. 22. Now, on to the topics. Now, I've been allowed one minute, everybody, to get all this in, and I'm going as fast as I can. Azra was allowed two minutes and came in at... Uh, da -da 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 -da. As, oh, Azra at the start, she was introducing, and she came in at one minute and 57 seconds to introduce. Antonia Harrison was his first speaker, two minutes and 27 seconds. She was allowed two minutes. And Julian Saracida then had the evaluation and one shotgun evaluation. Two, one minute he was allowed, one minute and 19 seconds. Very commendable. Nick Lacani was allowed two minutes for his topic, came in at two minutes and 37 seconds. Naughty boy, overtime. Kavita July was allowed one minute for the shotgun evaluation, came in at 33 seconds. Marvellous. Um, Olga Byrne, two minutes for her topic, she came in at one minute and 48 seconds. Pamela Benjamin, one minute allowed for the shotgun evaluation, came in at 58 seconds. Jackie Hogan, two minutes for her evaluation speech, not her evaluation speech, her proper topic speech and came in at 1 minute and 29 seconds. Fantastic. And to round off the whole thing, Christian came in, he was allowed 1 minute, and he came in at 1 minute and 14 seconds. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Deck. Thank you for an excellent timing report. Probably one of the best I've heard, actually. It's very good. Well done. Thank over you. time, over time, over time. Only one minute. No, but you actually had two minutes because I I missed you earlier, if you remember. But you were bang on. Thank you. Very useful timing. And we're running really well on time. Thank you. So now we move on to the breakfast of champions, the evaluations. So we have speech evaluations. We have open feedback in this section. We also have a general evaluation. So let's start with the speech evaluations. Our first evaluator, she has been a relay runner and has won many, many medals and also medals for gymnastics. Her favorite, she doesn't really have a favorite Olympic sport, but what she likes about the Olympic spirit is the effort, the success and that world reunion. So please welcome Ma, Thank you very much, Toastmaster, uh, dear Kavita. Let's get into the evaluation portion. Congratulations, DTM Julian Cerceda. That's what I can say. Why? For showing us how to cook with colors, indeed. You excel at cooking on authentic masala 
marinated presentation that matched content, color theory, with the use of powerful visual aids, I would dare to say. You also excelled to convey your message and even to end with a call to action. What an authentic call to action, right? Why not attending, you know, why not attend a workshop about PowerPoint to learn more about it and how to use color theory there if you are a non-designer, as many of us probably are. And that was a great, a great slide, just adding the QR code showing how to walk the talk in digital communicators. As for areas of growth, maybe you want to work on attention. Placing your visuals. At some point, you had the visuals here. So we were not sure if you were cutting you know, your head off. So just be mindful where you place them and why you want them at that level. Be careful. And second, what if you were mindful of the diversity of the audience? What do I mean by that? Have you thought that maybe not everybody is familiar with using QR codes? So how, why not share? Uh, the link of your presentation of that workshop in the chat with the audience. That could be a way to be mindful about your audience. Or what if there are some color-blinded people among the audience? Have you thought about that? So maybe you want to use some words and text like Deck is doing using Amber now for his uh, timer card, okay? Finally, to challenge yourself, I'd like you to think about why, why, what's the purpose of you moving around the screen? I don't know, we were following you, that was great. We know that you are great and awesome and authentic, you know, when using uh, OBS, but what if you use more movement, for instance, using a color wheel? Or what if you place yourself in one or another corner of the screen, depending on the section of your speech? And just one more thing to be mindful about. As, as non-native speakers, Julian, we need to be extra careful with the use of English language. For example, you live in the UK, British English, but you are using the American for, for color with no you. Yes, be mindful. And why not you know, may, pay attention to every single word presentation? In conclusion, you showed how we can cook with tech talk tech colors are digital communicators. Back to you, Toastmaster. Thank you, Ma. Another excellent presentation, very visual. Thank you so much. Thank you. So our next evaluator has been a Toastmaster for 15 years. He's also a founding member of a club. He likes helping other people grow. He enjoys all sports, and doesn't want to favor one sport amongst another. But what he really likes is seeing, watching people excel. What the Olympic platform means to him is watching people excel. But he's not so keen on the political side. So please welcome Mehul Shah. Madam Toastmaster and fellow Toastmasters and Krishna. Great, great speech. I will evaluate you on the three parts. What I saw, what I heard, and what I felt. To start with, it was a great confident person straight directly looking into the camera, which is very important because it is very easy to look at the screen, not at the camera and then lose the eye contact. We, are, we have a very limited tools and very limited resources in digital world. And you did it very well. You excel on that. Congratulations. You have that asset. Now we look at your presentation. You asked me very specifically to look at it. You use the pictures and videos in balance. Very good. We liked it. It was flawless, very good. One tip though, when we talk about the numbers, it is all about the focus. 
visuals are about the focus. When we talk about the number, it is always better to just show the big number. So for example, 35% of the people were reading the book. Instead of a tablet, it would be more powerful if you show the number 35%. Yeah, that, 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 that would be uh, uh, better, at least for me. Yeah? So that's uh, one thing. That's on the visual part. What I heard, extremely confident without us, arms, and structured speech. Very well done. You also have a very good rate in the way you spoke. So it was very understandable in this digital world as well. No specific accent, very well done. Pitch wise, it was good pitch. Now, in, in, when we have very limited tools in the digital world, one of the biggest tool is the vocal variety. I think that is where you have to just look a little bit better, increasing the pitch, we can't, we can't do a lot of actions and uh, what we do, do on the stage, but increase the speed, decrease the speed, increase the speed, decrease the speed. Maybe you can play with that experiment. That would be better. By the way, thank, uh, you have invested a lot in your sound system. So you were coming very clear anyway. Maybe that is the reason. <laughs> That's, it's great. Well done. And the last and the most important part is actually how I felt. <clears throat> Engaging very engaging. You started with the question, you had multiple questions throughout the presentation and you asked everyone to use the chat box. Well done on that part. Okay, I'm on the red. Oh, wow. Uh, but uh, I, I will finish up in uh, 30 seconds now. Uh, so, uh, so what I saw there that uh, you used everything. You asked me to look at the stories, how you make it or something, but I missed the story. I missed the story. Your, your message was clear. You wanted everyone to read the self-help uh, self book, but uh, that, that story to persuasion was missing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mahal. Thank you. Thank you for using that speech structure. I'd forgotten about it, what I felt, what I heard, what I saw. Thank you so much. So over to you, Deck. Uh, another timing report, please. Or may I have the timing report, please? Is that okay? <laughs> that was perfect. That was perfect. That was <laughs> lovely. And so let's go. Yes, uh, Marcano is uh, aiming at three minutes. He came in at 3.22. Very commendable. And um, Mehul Shah, three minutes, came in at exactly... You know, I didn't write it down. But everybody was fantastic. It was, it was possibly three and... 10 seconds, I think it was. Evaluator, the third evaluator then was, um, have I got this completely wrong? Where's Andrew Bennett? Because I haven't given my evaluation yet. Oh, Andrew, my evaluation <laughs> was zero seconds and I was well in time. Thank you. No, hold, well, hold, on a, hold on a second, whoa. Well, Mehel, I've got it here already. Mehel Shah, you are very naughty. You were three minutes and 43 seconds. Disgraceful. So Andrew, you have the target now. I am so <laughs> sorry, Andrew. <laughs> let, me, let me do the introduction, Andrew. So what Andrew, I'll do this from memory, what Andrew likes is the skateboarding. And what he was really liked about the Olympics is waking up every day to have those reports of all the winners and how people have excelled. So now I'd like to introduce you to Andrew Bennett, our next evaluator. A dreamy walk along a beach in Marbella segues cleverly, very cleverly, into a discussion about the electric car. A car that protects our planet, a car that saves lives. I was thrilled to hear Vincent this evening on such good form. We had the warmth of his persona. I'm used to the warmth of Vincent's persona when he speaks, but what I got this evening was the excitement as he was sharing with us about this form of electricity that was not draining on fossil fuels. Did you hear it in his voice? Because I heard it clearly in the tone and timbre of his voice, that sheer excitement, which varied the pace a little of 
Vincent's delivery for us this evening. I also heard the emotion when he was giving us persuasive speaking and speaking about those 7 million deaths per year that are due to pollution. And there was genuine emotion in his tone. I particularly enjoyed the vocal aspect of Vincent's speech this evening. I have two little comments to help with the presentation of the speech at the beginning. First of all, I noticed that Vincent in his little box was only half on screen. Now, to shoulder such a big topic, we need both our shoulders on screen and we need a nice clean posture as we're sharing and we're looking into the, to the lens and we're sharing our message with everybody, please. Also the slides, which I particularly enjoyed, some of the writing was a little bit small for me. Now you can say that maybe I've got a bit of myopia, but I think the writing was a little bit small this evening on the slides. So correcting the writing on the slides would help me greatly. My third recommendation, and this is key to this particular project. We didn't hear the project criteria beforehand, I believe, but this is about presenting a proposal. And with a proposal, after all this wonderfully persuasive information about electricity sources and electric cars, we need to nail it in those last seconds. So the title was, Make a Change Now. Make a Change Now. Why not use that as a rallying call at the end of the speech for everybody? I want to feel everybody's out of their seats and going to make that change and going towards that electric car after the inspiration of Vincent's speech. So I would have liked a much clearer rallying call at the end. And even buy an electric car would be a great thing to say, to round up so that we feel it's a true proposal that we are receiving and not simply a very beautifully constructed persuasive dialogue. So those are my three recommendations. Be completely on screen to shoulder the topic. Just raise the writing font a little bit, please, on the slides. And above all, give us a clear rallying call at the end so that we say, yes, we're with Vincent. We're coming to buy that electric car. I found this speech mesmerizing in so many ways, and I thoroughly enjoyed hearing Vincent this evening. I'm sure you did two Toastmasters. I'm handing back now to Kavita. Thank you, Andrew. Oh, I'm always um, so mesmerized by your evaluations. So thank you. So Deck, can we have the timing, please? Well, the timing for my amazing and wonderful and very talented tenor of a friend of mine, Andrew Bennett, was a very commendable Three minutes and 13 seconds. Well done, Andrew. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. So now we move on to the next part of our evaluations, which is our open feedback. So now, now can we please welcome Audrey, who will be conducting that. Welcome, Audrey. Amazing performance to our digital communicators gold medalist. And now it's time for open feedback. Our first speaker is DTM Drian with Cooking with Colors. Timer, please. Can I have 90 seconds on the clock? Please use the raise button um, at the bottom of uh, your screen to give um, Toastmaster Julian some commendation. For me? Oh, oh, sorry. oh 90 seconds. Just like that. Yes, Toastmaster Olga. Thank you, Madam. Oh, Madam Live Reporter, no, <laughs> Madam Feedback. I have seen Julian speak before and I'm blown away. He's amazing. He owns the screen. He owns his presentation. I saw him doing presentation on Zoom very in the early days and how to take it to the next level. And I was so excited seeing him on the program and he did a, what he gave us was a feast for the eyes. But I thought in the process, he lost a little bit of himself. The graphics were amazing. It was top notch, but I felt we lost Julian a bit. And I just liked to maybe to see him maybe take back the graphics a little bit and give us more of him because he's a phenomenal speaker, a phenomenal presenter. But I think we just lost a little bit of Julian with that presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So 
So who is next? Who would like to give Julian some commendations? I like the title very much. I thought it's very intriguing. I, I think I guess this must uh, Pamela. I liked I liked the chef jacket that he had on. I liked the metaphors. I liked it. I there were some points that I thought it, the meta the metaphor was kind of taking over the speech. I thought it was. I got a little confused. Are we about cooking? Or are we about a, a PowerPoint situation? So I really really liked it, but I wish the metaphors would have stopped a little sooner, and then we would have just gotten directly into it. So wonderful use of metaphors, very colorful. It really, really pulled me in. But when you went to the PowerPoint at the end, I thought it was a bit of a switcheroo. So if we would have had that a little sooner, I would have anticipated it. Yes, this must be Jackie. Hi, thank you. And a commendation, Julian. I thought it was an excellent talk. The thing I would like to say is one of the big problems with using PowerPoint is that it distracts us from the speaker. And there were one or two slides that had a lot of information on and I found myself watching the slide and not Julian, which is such a shame because Julian has great screen presence. So I guess my suggestion is maybe less slides, less busy, and don't have that message flashing up across you um, because it kind of lost the impact. You could have done that speech almost without PowerPoint, almost. Thank you. And now I'll ask um, you guys if you can give Toastmaster Jian some recommendation. Uh, I'll start with Toastmaster Andrew, Andrew Bennett. Thank you. I really enjoyed Julian's use of vocabulary this evening, particularly the colour cacophony. I thought that was simply a great phrase. Where I think that we maybe lost Julian a little bit was in the very beginning and opening statement. Now I've noticed that Julian's articulation improves when he relaxes more in the speech. When he tries a bit too hard at the beginning occasionally, the words aren't quite so distinct. I know I lost maybe about five or six words at the beginning, and that made it hard for me to tie up the, site, the slides and the presentation on screen. However, it was masterful in every other way. Thank you. The timer is, is showing me that we're running a bit out, um, out of time. So we quickly go to the second speaker, which is Toastmaster uh, Christian, DTM Christian. Anyone to give recommendation or commendation, please? Yes, Toastmaster Mao. Well, I would like to congratulate you, Christian, uh, for your visuals, you know that I'm a tech fan. <laughs> I really loved, you know, how you played with that and you took um, the audience for me personally. Yeah, you took the audience with you also, not only with the visuals, but with the engagement that you using the chat. Yeah, so congratulations for that. So um, I'd like to point out on my speech, if you pay attention to the, to, to the agenda, I missed my speech objectives completely because I was speaking for a different speech project. Apologies for that. And my evaluator was just too kind. <laughs> um, uh, uh, <laughs> I would like to commend uh, Christian for being uh, very honest. And I would recommend that he doesn't be so often. But hey, um, I, I thought it was very engaging. I thought he had fun with us. He got us involved and he got us thinking. And I really appreciated that. Thank you. And now you would have some recommendation for Toastmaster Vincent. Yes, Toastmaster Mihal. Yeah, Vincent, actually, it's, uh, it's, it looks like a very authentic speech and uh, you really actually gave the, the, the crux of the problem of uh, whether we really want to solve the problem of the world or not, whether the government really wants to do that or not. And that, that's uh, such a powerful and it hit me so well that, yeah, we are talking a lot and we are spending a lot of money, but where the money should go in like making just make the fuel free and your issue is half done anyway as well. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you. Over to you, Toastmaster Vede, Toastmaster Kavita.
All right, I'm back. Sorry about that, guys. So we're, we're, we're running on good time. We are now nearly at 1947. So we have some time for general evaluation. So our general evaluator is not here, I believe. I can't see him, Brian Dodd. If he's not here, what I suggest is we have open evaluation. So what we do now is evaluate this meeting, maybe, and also evaluate um, any evaluation, uh, any feedback from our evaluators. So shall we start with the meeting? Shall we have four minutes on the clock? Does that work with you guys? Yeah, four minutes on the clock. Anything about this meeting, maybe from our guests, perhaps? Uh, Nick, Kavita, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Uh, according to the agenda, we get the grammarian and one or two of the people up first. Uh, we have a Tiber grammarian. Yeah, it's all on my agenda. It's so weird. You're right, it felt like something was missing. Let's go with that. Yeah, I agree. So let's go back to our grammarian report, shall we? Cool. Our grammarian report. Yeah. This was a fun group to be grammarian for. I really thought that Deck started off the meeting with his reference to Gettysburg Address and 12 minutes and Abraham Lincoln changed the course of history, especially American history with 12 minutes. So it's a reminder all of us to think about our words. I really, really like that. But then Deck said, you get the bell, you get the bell, you get the bell. Maybe if he could call it mama, papa and baby bell, maybe it would be a little bit more charming. I don't know. We had three people that used the word of the day, Kravita, Antonia, and Mar. They used the word of the day. Now, after those, those main points, this meeting was about repetition, repetition, repetition. And the person who won the repetition of award of the day was Vincent because we are killing, we are killing, we are killing, we are killing. So I would suggest that we use a little bit more creative words. And I thought that you're passionate about the subject, but I think if you said we are killing people with the exhaust from our cars, you could also say X, we are massacring, we are slaughtering, we are wiping them off the face of the earth. So we bring a little bit more drama. I agree that repetition is helpful, but if we use different words, it helps paint a richer picture. Our second word that was used over and over again was winning. We had Antonia, winning is all around us, winning in sport, winning in all areas of our life. And Nick said, winning is for winners. So we are a rep repetitious group today. But my favorite phrase of the day was our Toastmaster of the day, Kravita, let's move on to the breakfast of champions. And our breakfast was a bowl of Wheaties made for our champions and it was sprinkled with the names of Olympic people and Olympic events. So wonderful job, digital communicators, back to you Kavita. Thank you, Pamela. So now can we do general evaluation? Yep, yes, no. Okay, thank you. So we're gonna do two minutes of general evaluation. For me, I think for all of us, maybe if we can evaluate this meeting, what we thought of it, uh, any commends, any recommends. So if we can have a couple of co commends, please. I thought the president looked really good today. You lost your goggles. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, I thought it was a very funny meeting today, very, lots of humor. Uh, we were having lots of in-jokes in the, in the, uh, behind the scenes about timers and, uh, uh, and bells and all sorts of things going on. And I loved the flow, the, the energy of the meeting. And I think that our guests enjoyed it as well. Okay. Jackie, you've got your hand up. Jackie, do you want to go next? Yes, thank, thanks for that. Yeah, the thing I wanted to commend you on is the pace um, a lot of Toastmasters meetings would would spend two hours doing what you do. And I just love it. Just kind of pace it's kind of really feels like it's going places. Um, I thought that was I'm thinking I'm making notes about things that I could do in my Toastmasters meetings that could actually get more of that in. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. Olga, you've got your hand up, too. I loved the energy. I loved the pace 
But two things stuck out for me, which I'm going to take away from the meeting. And one is I've met Deck before and he's always telling me your resting face. Because <laughs> when I was Toastmaster, as soon as I'm off the screen, as soon as I've introduced somebody, it's down looking down. Whereas Davita, our, Davita, our, our Toastmaster this evening, I'm sorry, I'm pronouncing your name wrong. A brilliant resting face. It was incredible. Every time the, the camera went to her, she was perfect resting face. I'm going to model, channel my inner Kavita when I'm doing Toastmaster again. And the other person I just wanted to mention is the evaluator, Andrew Bennett. He, he did it like a performance. And that's what it was about. I mean, I felt I was listening to a theater, theatrical actor. It was phenomenal. Everyone did brilliantly, but that just stuck in my mind. Fantastic. But great meeting. I'd love to come again. Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're most welcome. Thank you. Any Anything we could improve in this meeting? Any improvers? Can I speak? Yeah, go ahead, Julian. One thing that uh, it relies on, on you, Kavita, is to make sure that we have all the participants. We cannot find out five seconds before calling the general evaluator that there is no general evaluator. That's and true. I like what you did. Okay, open feedback, but own it. Go down that street and say, and now because I'm feeling energized with this meeting, I will be the general evaluator. Or speak with somebody beforehand and try to arrange something behind the scenes. Do not make that error so obvious to the audience and to the members. Apart from that, very well done, Kavita. I was, I was being authentic. <laughs> Sorry, just joke. <laughs> Okay, so any any more improvers? Oh, Mahel, you put your hand up. Go for yeah. it. Yeah, so I I don't know whether it's a practice uh, in our club or not, but after every speech, I would rather like to have uh, 30 seconds, half a minute to just uh, write down actually the, the notes to give the feedback to the speaker. I missed it. It, it, it went so fast, actually one speech, another speech, third speech. So it, it, there was no time in between to write down anything. Yeah, I think, I think we like to run it like a TV uh, show, from end to end. Uh, actually, can I, just, can I just mention Don't that? I mean, we, we were discussing this before the meeting, at the, the board meeting, and one of the things that uh, one of the uh, board members pointed out was that in between, with the gap for a minute or whatever it is, still very few members are giving any kind of feedback to speakers. That's why what we do is at the end of the meeting, we're going to open up a breakout room for the, the speaker to go into and you can go and talk to them about their speech and tell them what you thought or how you made, how they made you feel. So that's more, more authentic, but also more in depth than I thought you did really well. Awesome. Loved it. So we're not getting enough written feedback. Uh, to make even one minute or three minutes worthwhile. Uh, but thank you for your observation. We will keep looking at this. Thank you. Ma, just final comments from you, and then we'll um, move on to the next bit. Yeah, I'd like to honor um, one of the roles that don't, you know, or at, at least one or the one that doesn't have any feedback or evaluation, and that's the live reporter. Our lovely dear Colette has been reporting on Twitter. She's been doing a great job for the first time, so I'd like to congratulate her for, for that. The only little recommendation is that maybe, Colette, you want to remove the text, the chat in the picture so everybody doesn't have to see your private messages with anyone else. That's the only thing. For the rest, good job for the first time. Congratulations. Thank you, Ma. Just a final thank you to somebody who's been beavering away in the background, and that's our producer, Antonio. So thank you very much, Antonio. Big hand for you, thank you. Because there's a lot of technical tech that goes behind these meetings. Now, now I'd like to welcome back President Nick Lacani. Welcome, Nick. Thank you very much, Kavitha. Well done to you. Well done to everybody. And everybody spoke today, I believe, apart from a friend of mine, Garod, who snuck in a few minutes ago. We will talk to him in a minute. Now, I want to honor those people with educational awards in our club since uh, 1st of July. Uh, we have had level ones for Mafazo Rahman and Colette Ainsco, 
uh, level two for Deck Klusky, and level four for Andrew Bennett, and a level five for Pamela Benjamin. So please, if we've missed anybody up, just make, send a note politely to Colette, our VPE. Fabulous work. Uh, the other thing Colette said was, we have a contest. If we don't have speakers or contestants, we can't have a contest. And if we don't have the helpers that make the contest, we don't have a contest. September 13th, mark it in your diary. There is a small technical problem on the website, but you can sign up for the other roles, but the speak, the contestants, please go directly to Colette. Uh, otherwise from that, well done. Thank you very much, Colette. And what, uh, oh, sorry, we have another message saying, Pam Rowley is a contest chair. Is that right? Well done, Pam. We've already, look, see, the power of the spoken word is so powerful. What I'd like to do is to uh, just call upon uh, the guests, just have a quick word. What's your takeaway? Let's go with Jackie. What's your takeaway today? <laughs> um, that all clubs, all Toastmasters clubs, no matter where they are or whether they're online or not, are all great fun. Um, I think the takeaway for me was um, that you can get three speeches into an hour and a half and still do lots of table topics. Thank you, Jackie. Great to see you. Let's go with Olga. Hi, what's your one takeaway today? My one takeaway, energy the, and professionalism, the way you use Zoom. So that's my takeaway. Thank you. Thank you. I'd love to see you again. And by the way, go Division C. Uh, let's go to, uh, we have another, where are we? Uh, okay, so uh, Laura had to go. However, we have Garod Murphy in the room. Garod. You saw a little bit of the end of the meeting. What's your takeaway? Thanks, Nick. And hello, digital communicators. I'd been uh, putting it off or been, had other events planned all along since the foundation of the club. I was delighted to uh, come in around midway through the table topics. I see, I see a, a fabulous club. As, uh, what's I your one takeaway, girl? Sorry to take interrupt. Away. What's your one takeaway? That uh, out to help people, uh, be better delivery, better performance, and more uh, more visual visual uh, delivery. I think. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Garod. This is Digital Communicators. We run our meetings like a TV show. We start on time, we finish on time. It's 20 hundred hours in London. Time for bed. And breakout rooms. Please, uh, Antonia, close the recording and open up the breakout rooms for the speakers. And we are going to have an after party now.